Hi everyone, Jerry here. Thank you for watching today. So in this video, I'm going to be creating a gift bag to go in my Mother's Day hamper or gift basket. Um, it's a really sweet little bag with some treats inside. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's a bag of fudge in there. You've got this sort of tapered top that squeezes in together and is held together with some hook and loop. So I think it's a really lovely gift bag and something different to what I already have on the channel. I'll give you the measurements of that. So the height of this gift bag is seven, the width is three and a half, and the depth is two and a quarter. So you've got sort of this three and a half inch section here, and then it tapers off at the top then. So no specialty dies are required to make this project. So let's get started. So my inspiration for today's video has come from the packaging of this fudge. So I've just taken the box apart and just noted down the, the measurement. So I'm going to deconstruct this. You can get this out of a piece of um, 12 by 12 cardstock, but not everyone has access to that. So you need one piece of six and a quarter by nine and a quarter. And along the six and a quarter inch side, score at two and a quarter and five and three quarters. Then rotate your cardstock and score at two and a quarter, five and three quarters down to that two and a quarter score line there. And then rotate it back to the original starting position. I'm going to bring in my ruler here and I'm going to pop that in line with the three and a half inch score line. So to about there and then I'm going to score at one and one eighth down to my ruler which is about to two and a quarter. Then set that to one side I'm going to do some further scoring on that one. Then I have a piece of six and a quarter by 11 and a quarter. Along the six and a quarter inch side, score at two and a quarter and five and three quarters. Then rotate your card so you have that half inch tab at the bottom and score at two and a quarter, nine and a quarter. So they're full score lines. And then at five and three quarters, score down to that two and a quarter score line across there. Then rotate it back to your starting position. And the score line here now marries up with the five and a half inch score line. So I'm just going to pop my ruler in there. And again, score at one and a, one eighth, one and one eighth down to four and a quarter. So I'm just hitting my ruler there. And we're going to do some additional scoring on that piece as well. So on your shorter piece, where you've got this half score line, you're going to go from the point of that down to this corner point here. So take your stylus and your ruler and just score down to that corner there. And then from that point, you're going down to that score line just on the edge there. I'm just gonna turn my cardstock around and score down to there. So then we've created this triangle in this section. So we're gonna do the same now on the larger piece. So take that point of that sort of half inch score line from there down to that corner and from there down to that corner. So pop your stylus in first and then move your ruler to the point that you want to score. And then do the same on the opposite side. Now I'm scoring on quite a hard surface so if I turn that over you can see all of the other score lines apart from the triangle I've made. 
so it's entirely up to you if you're happy with your score line then um, leave it at this stage but I like to bring back in my scoreboard and get a deeper impression on that sorry about the noise there <clears throat> so I like to get a deeper impression so I line my ruler up to the score line that I've created I'm going to pick a point so I'm picking the seven inch track there and I'm going to line this up to my score line hit my ruler against the stylish stylus in that seven inch track and then once I'm happy with the position I'll just go back over over that score line there <clears throat> again run that down the seven inch line that up to your score line and just make sure your ruler lines up to your stylus and the seven inch score line at the top and again just go over that so if I turn that over now I've got a deeper impression on there but as I said it's entirely up to you if you've got a softer surface and you've got a better impression on your cardstock then just miss this step okay so we're going to concentrate on the larger piece first of all so we're going to fold and burnish along the score lines for the moment leave this sort of triangular area free and once we've done some trimming we can have a look at that so we've got the half inch tab on the right hand side and we're going to concentrate on the bottom so i'm just going to free up these score lines and i'm cutting up to that first score line So free up those three pieces and then just rotate and remove that outer rectangle like so. I'm going to leave this one whole and then just take a wedge just out of this end square here and then a little wedge off this corner. If I pop that back down on my mat, my bottom should look like this. Then I'm going to rotate to the opposite side. So I've got the half inch tab now on the left hand side. And I'm just going to concentrate on these two score lines. So the first and the second. And cut up to that first score line. Like so. Then I'm going to rotate, remove that outer rectangle, fold this piece down, and then I'm going to remove these two rectangles. Just cut right across there, like so. And then the final step, just take a little wedge off this corner here. And if I pop that back down on the mat, you should have a whole piece now that looks like this. Now I've got better access to this piece, I'm just going to create a valley fold in that score line and then just help those score lines along. So that when we go to assemble this, it can be pinched together like so. So set that to one side. So fold and burnish along the score lines. Again, just miss out this section for now. And we've got the half inch tab on the right hand side. And we're going to work along the bottom and free up those score, score lines again. So a very similar cut in process. This is just the panel without the lid. So remove that outer rectangle fold that one back and just take a little wedge off 
each side of this square and a little wedge off that bottom piece okay then rotate to the opposite side and we're just going to take a little wedge off this panel now and then that's the other panel prepared i'm just going to help those score lines again get them so they can be pinched in place so I'm going to connect both of my panels together now using the half inch tab that we've created. So make sure that your score line at the bottom marries up. If you're slightly out on the top, you can trim that away, but you need to make sure that the bottom lines up so you've got a nice sort of balanced gift box and as my nan would say we don't want your gift box to be wonky donkey so before I fold over the other side and attach this tab to this end I want to add my pattern paper just while I have a flat surface so the first thing that I want to do is just bring in my corner punch and I'm going to round off the corners to this square here. So this is the lid. I'm just going to round that off. I'm going to bring in my pattern paper and I'll talk you through the measurements shortly for those. I'm just going to round off the corners to that one side for the lid there. So for the two larger panels, you need two pieces of three and a quarter by six and three quarters. For these two side rectangles, you want two pieces of two by three and a quarter. For the lid, you need a piece of three and a quarter by one and three quarters. And then for the base, you need a piece of three and a quarter by two. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach those now. I'm going to use some Kalal glue just to help strengthen the gift bag. So just be mindful that your base piece needs to be on the opposite section to your lid because this is the front panel and we'll be folding over this section last so you want your pattern paper on the correct side or correct piece so I'm just going to pop you on high speed now while I do that So my pattern paper is now attached. I'm just gonna flip this over, fold this one panel back on itself and add quick grab glue along this tab here. And then fold this panel over and everything should marry up. So now both sides are attached, I'm going to concentrate on the base. As I said, this panel is our front panel, so I'm going to pen, pend, bend that back. I'm going to add the inside tabs in first, like so. I'm going to use Kalal glue just to help strengthen this base. The fudge pieces have a little bit of weight to them. Um, so that's why I'm using the Kalal glue. If you're using something lighter, then I wouldn't worry about that too much. And then just add 
Kalal to the last piece there. Just square everything off then. Just add a little pressure. You can rub it against the bottom of your desk there or go in with your bone folder and just press everything down. So I've gone ahead and I've attached hook and loop to the two ends of the lid there. Pop the one side in place, so usually on the lid I do it, pair them up and then really squash that bag into place and fold that down flat and obviously give that enough time to let it grab. So I did that off camera because um, I just needed to use some hot glue on those hook and loops because um, the ones that I have are, are not of very good quality. So I'm going to bring the fudge back in and that will fit nicely inside that gift bag. I've got quite a bit of space there at the top so you can add another gift if you want. So there's the side profile, the front and then the back. I think it looks really sweet. So I'll just bring back in the original box. Obviously, <laughs> I've taken it apart. You can see I made it slightly taller just to make the measurements um, easier to replicate. But I think they both look really sweet. You can size this up or down quite easily. And I think it's great for um, all occasions. You could add some additional embellishments on the front here, a little message. I've gone sort of really quite simple with the uh, decoration. Those pattern papers just speak for themselves. This is from a Simply Made Crafts paper pad. If it's available, I will link it in the description box below. So I hope you've enjoyed this video from me today. If you have, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. I'm sharing regular video videos on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Um, really sort of different projects um, using dies, some using just your scoreboard cards and I share sort of magazine flick throughs and um, I'm on the made to surprise design team as well as some additional work for craft stash so if I receive sort of any of their products I show you the samples that I make with those and so on so it's a varied um, content on the channel so hopefully be something of interest to you so I hope you have a lovely crafty day and I'll see you in the next one